Hey guys, just want to do another video um, to answer the question, why is there so much water in my brine tank? Um, you see this mostly in the Kenmore, North Star, Whirlpool, GE water softeners. When you open up the lid to pour your salt in, there's a whole bunch of water in there. And the reason for that is, if you take your lid off and then you unsnap the lid in the back and you look in there, you're going to see a little, uh, it's going to have either five screws or eight screws. A little kind of a cap there with your motor on top of it and inside there's what's called a rotor disc and you'll see that here um, listed I, I'll show you a picture of the top side and then the bottom side and on the bottom side it's Teflon coated and what happens because of wear and tear it just wears a, a little um, ring in there and what that does is it allows the water softener to put water in the brine tank but it won't let it form a suction to pull the water, the salt water, out of the brine tank. So here's an easy check for that. What you do is you go to your regen button on your front screen, press it and hold it until the system starts to go into its cycle. The first cycle or the first step usually is fill. That means it's going to put water in your brine tank. Now yours, depending on how full it is, it may or may not because there's a, a safety float in there that um, they come they're set real high, the float's set real high, so that's why your water softener uh, salt tank is so full of water is because it needed to be adjusted and it never was. So it's just been putting water in there and filling it up. So it's gonna fill or it's not, but um, it should say fill on your screen. Then your next step is gonna be, um, where well, while it's filling, you don't have to worry about that. Press the button again and it, it will advance it to backwash. Once it gets set and it starts backwashing, press your button again and it should go to brine and that's when um, once it's in brine on the side of your water softener as you're facing your water softener usually it's on the right side there's a little uh, looks like a spaceship and down beside that's a little nut if you take that nut off you should feel suction there if you don't and it's blowing water out, that means it's your rotor disc. If you feel suction, then it's going to be down inside your brine well in with your, um, your pickup tube. That will be your problem. And we can get to that on another video some other day. But nine times out of ten, you'll put your finger there and there won't be suction and it will be pushing water into your salt tank. So go ahead and put, your, put the screw, uh, screw the nut back on of your brine line there, which is either black or dark brown, and then keep pressing your regen button and advance it to where it stops and um, uh, then what I'll do is down here in the description I'll also put a, uh, a link to how to rebuild those it's real simple now there are two kinds of rotor discs there's one for the three-quarter inch and there's one for the one inch and the way to tell the difference is this the three-quarter inch has five screws in it and um, I'm going to show you a cap a valve cap or cover whatever you want to call it with the five holes and then I'm going to show you one that used one that's got eight holes in it and that's for the one inch that's how you know the difference between whether or not you've got a one inch or a three-quarter inch now sometimes on the one inch on your bypass um, it's got a it's got a big cone on one end that you push and pull And on the three-quarter inch, it's just kind of cylindrical. It's the same diameter on on the in, on uh, the service side and the bypass side. But on the one inch, some of them have a larger cone. So that's how you tell if it's your rotor disc. And you just buy a rotor disc kit, and I'll put the that down there in the description so you can buy the rotor disc kit. They're not too terribly expensive. I think fifty or sixty bucks. I haven't checked yet. Um, now, if you don't have a Whirlpool GE North Star water softener, but you've got like a Fleck or a Clack brand or one of the others, um, what you want to do is the same thing. Whether it's a push button or whether it's a dial, get it to the part where it says to brine. And when it starts brining, that means it's going to suck the salt water out of the tank. Now, when you get it to brine, you can remove, go down in the brine well, which is inside your salt tank, and there's that white tube. And inside there, there's a little nut that you can unscrew 
or follow your brine tube up to where it goes into your water softener and you can unscrew the nut there. And when you put your finger up to it, it should be it shouldn't be having suction. If it has suction up here next to the water softener, then you go down to where the brine tube is connected to your um, pickup tube and you unscrew that nut and you check it. If it's got suction there, then the problem is in with your um, pickup tube. Nine times out of ten, it's there's a little ball down there. Now I got a picture of a pickup tube. It goes down and then it's looks like it makes a U and then you got some little lines in it. Inside there's a little ball. So that way when it sucks all the water out, the ball falls and it keeps it from putting air inside your uh, water softener tank when um, it's going through its brine cycle. So a way to fix that is one of two ways. You unscrew the, the nut to take your brine tube off. You pull out your um, pickup tube and you can blow into it and it should blow into it and you blow air okay and then when you suck it should prevent you from sucking because the ball is falling down and sometimes they just get kind of weird inside there so if you put it together put it back in brine or just leave it in brine it'll suck air that's fine Could connect it if it stops sucking air then that's good then put it down in the water and if it um, starts to suck air take it off to get rid of the connect the suction put your brine tube in there or your pickup tube put your brine line to it if it starts to suck water because you'll feel it you can hold on to the tube real tight and you'll feel it if it starts to suck water through then that means it's working now if it doesn't then um, here's a quick easy fix down there towards the bottom of the tube just before it goes into the little screen you just cut it now you're gonna say well it's gonna suck in a lot of air that's okay, it doesn't matter because while it's brining, it sucks in the water, it sucks in the air, and then when it does its final rinse and backwash, however your system's set up, it's gonna get rid of that air. You're not gonna have air in your lines in the house. I don't care what people say, it'll, it'll work that way. I bought a brand new water softener, I installed it in my house, and I was like, the dishes are cloudy, what's going on here? I went out and did all my troubleshooting techniques, and I had to um, cut my tube, just before it goes into the screen, I got a little picture that shows you where to cut it. It didn't hurt anything and, you know, life is fine. Rather than going back to the place and getting another pickup tube, um, I just cut it. And you can get those online too. Uh, I'll see if I can put one there, but really, for all the effort and all that it's worth, as far as money, it's just better just to cut it and um, you'll be okay and it's not going to ruin anything. All right, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please ask. I, I do appreciate your questions, the guys that I ask. Um, I'm here to help you guys, and um, you can help me. If you're watching this video, that means you got a water softener, and you have friends that have water softeners, please hit subscribe. So when I, get, uh, when I do another video, you'll get an email about that particular video. Because if most of everything I talk about on the water softener videos has to do with troubleshooting um, water softeners. And so you'll get the next video that comes out. And if you don't like it, just you know, ignore it. But uh, please subscribe and or share it with your friends. Because if you've got water softeners, so do your neighbors. And they're having some of the same problems you do. Um, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hey, give us a thumbs down. I'm okay with that. I'm just here to help. All right. Well, you guys have a great day. And don't forget to subscribe. And it doesn't hurt to share on Facebook uh, with all your other friends that have water softeners. Okay. Thank you and have a great day.